Huh. I bet you didn't expect this video to pop up on your main screen. So anyway, welcome guys to uh, my channel. I'm uploading Boom Arena and yeah, I'm gonna be playing this video game uh, right now, which was popular kinda a year ago while uh, the Clash Royale had a crisis and uh, right now it doesn't seem to be the case that people are still coming to play Boom Arena but anyway I'm I'm gonna be playing some uh, of this video game today in the first game I actually will play in mirror matches so that's gonna be interesting uh, one more thing I want to uh, like clarify is that I've had some uh, break from YouTube uh, for quite a bit, so I don't think uh, I don't think the upload schedule which I kinda promised back then uh, was kinda hell, but it doesn't really matter since I'm uploading right now anyway. My opponent plays pretty well so far, but I expect him to collapse anytime soon. Yeah, he's having nothing for this super. Aid. That was unfortunate. So, uh, yeah. I kinda had to take some break from the YouTube recently because I didn't feel uh, so well, like uh, I was missing many uh, things in my personal life and uh, after a month I feel kinda uh, fresh uh, with, uh, with kinda a, I, would, I want uh, to say a new motivation, but the motivation is uh, still the same, I kinda want to uh, get this uh, game promoted to as much uh, people as possible as well as I want to promote just a strategy games to uh, people because I, <laughs> I genuinely think if you are uh, to play any video game I don't think it should be a shooter game because like it it doesn't add to your life as much as uh, uh, strategy video games uh, do uh, uh, just, be just because like uh, you don't have to think as much and uh, it is kind of important uh, thing to uh, be able to think in your life so yeah that's that's what I'm gonna be promoting that's gonna be actually a very very cool sequence right now I'm gonna even stun this gunner oh, I think that the game is over uh, I think I'm gonna actually take the rest of this video just to uh, explain how to play this deck I'm playing right now because it kinda seems uh, very strong in the meta, it's obviously a super ape cycle but with a mortar which is the variation I don't see many people run, obviously some people copy it from me because I'm on the uh, top of the leaderboards but yeah, uh, it, it, ki it kinda depends, I think that's the most uh, solid uh, variation right now in the meta and, and next game I'm gonna kinda walk you through how to play it and what I'm thinking while I'm playing it. Okay, so we're gonna be playing against uh, the same guy once again. I don't want to like assume he's running the same deck, but he probably will. There we go. He's gonna be playing a super eight once again, and yeah. So the first thing that you want to uh, grasp with uh, any deck that you play is uh, well, uh, uh, what assets do you have? So. Uh, to make a balanced deck, uh, it is usually advised to like have a win condition. It is to advise to have uh, two spells and uh, other stuff like a mini tank, uh, some so, some cycle cards. Not not entirely necessary, but it's uh, nice to have. Uh, also a building and a, a ranged card, which can basically uh, give you some advantage during the game. I'm gonna play. A, here I'm gonna play actually a very aggressive mortar. Just try to pick, take a fight to the bridge. I'm gonna get this gunner down. If my mortar, okay, my mortar actually will get a shot, which will be very convenient. I'm gonna get my super a rolling, and I expect him to block my gunner with a swordsman. And then, okay, he actually gets everything on my gunner, which will kinda minimize the damage and in hindsight I think that was probably the best play he could have done so right now I expect okay as about to say I expect him to go in with a super A but he didn't do that so we're gonna just defend in a regular manner. Okay now he's gonna play super A and that's where I'm gonna have my move. okay. That was actually very smart move out of him. I don't think that's gonna Okay I actually 
mitigated this damage way better than I anticipated uh, prior. Obviously his EQ was very smart uh, on my mortar, that's usually what you want to do if you have the mana advantage. And yes, yeah, so right now we kinda shuffled some place. I then I wasn't able to explain everything clearly because my opponent is uh, kinda uh, messing with my position which will happen in uh, any game that we're playing. Uh, obviously uh, no one wants to play a completely symmetrical game where uh, nothing happens because uh, when nothing happens uh, nobody really fights for an advantage and it's uh, kinda uh, the game decided by spells which I don't think uh, either me nor you like so yeah. Uh, in this matchup I would say that Super Ape is the uh, uh, the strongest card because after all uh, your opponent will have to either overspend on defense to stop that uh, or uh, play a mortar which is the second win condition which is kind of threatening but kind of isn't that strong because your opponent can easily punish you by going super ape on the other lane and uh, if you don't have mortar you'll have to overspend so yeah that, that, that's some kind of dynamic i think i'm gonna explain it uh, in uh, more detail like when once I do some guides about this deck but for now it's just a gameplay I think you can get a nice grasp how to play this deck from my video and right now we're gonna get a game against the very uh, very aggressive 20 mile player and I don't mean aggressive in game although it can be he starts with a steel hammer which can mean various uh, things the thing I expect the most once I see the Steel Hammer is obviously the default deck because it's the most in, uh, popular deck with a Steel Hammer for the fact that you basically install the game and the first thing you, you get is just uh, this deck uh, if you don't change anything you will just play with that so yeah my opponent kinda gets away with a nice defense but I think uh, uh, it, was, it wasn't perfect because if you're up against Super Ape, you want to really save the cannon uh, against a Super Ape, because if you don't, uh, the thing that's on your screen happens, absolute pandemonium. My opponent even gets a splash for a Fire Tiny, I don't think he would have held a tower even, uh, without, even without that, but yeah, we're gonna just take the tower and yeah. That's a that's very important tip if you're playing against Super Ape, uh, always carry a building and hold it against Super Ape or uh, if you are playing a building against something else, you have to make sure that you are at least mentally prepared to deal with this Super Ape because yeah, it's pretty much the threat that's, uh, uh, that's very fast, that's coming straight at your tower and if you don't stop it your opponent will gain a significant advantage so uh, obviously uh, one more disclaimer i don't think super ape decks are too easy to play but at the same time they're not the hardest like uh, it's way easier to play a super ape than a digger because with, with a digger you kinda get a guaranteed damage but you get uh, way less uh, than, uh, in comparison to super ape so uh, well, you are kind of guaranteed to get some damage uh, after uh, all of the hustle, it's way less and you have to just get it uh, constantly over and over again. I mean, there's obviously the argument of poison cycling as well, but I'm not gonna grasp it right now, because basically spell cycling is, uh, is the behavior that favors uh, kind of the possession, which is uh, kind of very close and no one really can break through only then the spell cycle will occur and will be the best move in other situations i kind of advise you to play uh, more natural win conditions uh, because they will just get more value uh, for the mana so yeah in the meantime i'm just absolutely obliterating this guy because uh, there's nothing to be done here as i expected he's playing a default deck and uh, I'm absolutely getting a very good matchup because first of all I know how to play this matchup, second of all I don't think my opponent knows how to play this matchup and third of all I think even if he knew how to play this matchup it would have been already very hard for him to come back into this game so we are gonna just uh, wrap it up right here. Next game will be against Chadmaster who has zero medals and we're gonna see 
what he has by playing super first play. In my opinion, super eight first play is not only a great way to just attack your opponent because obviously you're threatening to get some instant damage. It's also a, a very nice way to scout your opponent and get some information because obviously uh, you don't want to all in yourself uh, first play into your opponent. You kind of want to get some info on uh, what he's playing. Uh, I'm gonna just play rolling still here. I probably should have just played only bomb girl, but it doesn't really matter. He kind of gets a very good start because he's getting a damage advantage. My spray will get two hits though, so he kind of underestimated that. Uh, bomb blasters though will be a very annoying threat to deal with because I uh, uh, so far had to spend a lot against them. Usually it's a, a nice trade if you can get um, like uh, okay that's that's unfortunate hit. I'm gonna play swordsman late just to kill this digger. Honestly, why not? He's playing bomb girl very high. And not expecting me to uh, snipe it, obviously I will, and I'm gonna proceed with a massive attack, because right now I have 11 mana at the bridge, and he has to deal with it uh, in some way. And it looks like he refused to do so, so yeah, that, that, that sometimes happens. People... Uh, People in this game are kinda sometimes over eager on what they want to do because uh, after all it kinda seems like a strategy game but kinda sandbox like where you can just make your own deck. Uh, sometimes you just have to stick to the principles because uh, after all you're spending mana which is very uh, very important resource you have to kinda manage your mana because if you don't your opponent will realize that you are not managing, managing your mana very well and then you'll just get better trades and uh, as you may know like usually having 10 mana is better than 5 mana because you have more options to play troops it's not not it's not always the case sometimes you can hold 10 mana with 5 but yeah not always my opponent just gave up and we're going to the fifth game of the video against balls with 400 mils uh, at last i would say a, a, a worthy opponent uh, i'm gonna play a, a a mortar just to counterplay and force some uh, mana back. Uh, while playing against a flying robot, it's very important to uh, force out the uh, weird uh, place out of them because, uh, if I'm being honest, flying robot is a very annoying archetype which uh, many people to st struggle to play against and. Uh, uh, it is very strong when uh, all the pushes uh, that a uh, lava player is uh, playing uh, are kind of connected while you have to deal with a huge air dev ball. But once they are separated, they are pretty much very easy to deal with. I'm gonna actually get a one mortar shot, which uh, always will be nice for me. I'm gonna get a rolling steel as well. I don't think that was the best rolling steel of my career because. Right now I have to deal with a skeleton keg, which yeah, it will get some damage. So that was that, that was kind of nice play. Obviously I don't want to waste another more. Okay, another more. I think he is gonna actually set up a. Uh, okay, he won't be setting up a, a flying robot behind this uh, T Rex because he played shield skeletons and won't be having mana to set up a T. Uh, okay. Well, that's interesting, very aggressive flying bomb, I don't think... I don't think it's gonna even matter, because, I mean, he can basically sacrifice this tower and start a push, and I think if he doesn't do that, it's gonna be a mistake in his position, because he kinda uh, is behind damage right now, because I was very aggressive, and that's pretty much how you play against this type of decks. I'm gonna right now play a... Uh, play some defense, uh, good thing I decided to do so because my opponent is gay, going very aggressive uh, against my position, I'm gonna play even super ape on defense, at this point it's just important for me not to lose the tower and yeah, he's gonna play another skeleton kick, I'm gonna even uh, high kite it with mortar just to kite uh, things from the two sides of the board, I'm gonna play a uh, swordsman right here, uh, I'm gonna kite it all over, 
I'm gonna play a gunner right here, uh, just to DPS this uh, flying robot uh, by a tidy bit. Uh, it's not r really gonna matter in this game, but yeah, it's a good principle to still defend even if you're uh, very hard winning. So that's gonna be GG's and I think that's gonna be it for today's video. He wasn't playing the best raw, uh, flying robot uh, deck, but it was good enough and I think uh, uh, I've done a good job explaining how to like uh, separate uh, enemy forces, uh, divide them and basically conquer. There's a strategy you can uh, google it. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, pretty much my return to YouTube. I've had a, a nice time during this one month because I could just uh, rest for a bit and not being stressed to upload basically each and every day. Also, a huge thanks to my 186 subscribers who didn't subscribe once I got off from the platform. Uh, if the video goes to any of you, I gladly appreciate it. And if you are the new viewer on this channel, I highly encourage you to subscribe because uh, yeah. I'll start. Uh, I'll start uploading. I w I wouldn't say daily, but I'm gonna try to keep the daily schedule. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep uh, my schedule as close to daily as possible from now on. We're gonna see if that's gonna work out. But yeah, I'm gonna be back to YouTube uploading some strategy games videos, starting with a Boomer in and yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Boomerina.